Hi, so I had a, an interesting question put to me recently, and that was how to come up with the um, design for a wind turbine stroke generator for use in harsh conditions where you don't necessarily have a massive tool set or an awfully high skill level. Now, when you think about those kind of things, of course, they immediately go to uh, the wind capture, uh, whether it's blades or a vertical or a horizontal, but that's where your thoughts go. Now, to be honest, um, you can make a wind turbine out of just about anything, including old planks. It's not that difficult to make the actual generation bit, the wind capture bit of it. Uh, and there's lots and lots of really good videos, including some that I've done on things like converting washing machines into wind turbines. So there's lots and lots of things. But what the focus is on is on the wind capture. Now it makes sense, obviously, because the potential energy is all about the sail area you can get into the wind to capture it, so it makes a lot of sense. But I don't think it's the really challenging bit, because almost invariably what happens is you take some existing motor and bolt that onto your wind capture device. The braver souls, obviously, will make an actual generator, something like a pancake generator, and bolt that on, and you see quite a few of those. And they're really nicely made. But the challenges of them, obviously, is um, getting it all true. Getting it all in the centre and getting it so those gaps are as small as possible because that gives you the best generation option. Now, I was mulling this over and thinking, what would be a good way of getting very close engineering tolerances but not having the machinery to do it. So not having a lathe, basically. Uh, and I was thinking, well, a drill press. Drilling is one of those things you can find absolutely everywhere. And in fact, you can make your own drills. Uh, and there are several YouTubes on that. So drilling actually is surprisingly accurate for the most basic of tools. And that's what I began thinking about. If you think about drilling, you're probably thinking about something like reciprocation, or at least I am. So I made this bobbin. It's just a blank bobbin, actually, that I'm going to put a coil on, and I'm looking at this steel rod, because that fits very tightly into that bobbin. Mostly because that bobbin, actually, is just a bit of stock pipe. Now, I made a bobbin, but you could equally just drill a hole in a block. So that will slide very nicely in and out of my bobbin. So I'm going to wind a coil on that. So there's a coil. Now, that holds a bit of pipe, and it was exactly 10 millimetres. So I've got a 10 millimetre bolt. There it is. And just cut the head off that bolt, cut it to size, and then cut a slot in it. And that's what we end up with. So we've got a little driving slot right there, drilled it, cut the end off, and that slides nicely in and out of the centre of that coil. Now we're going for a reciprocating engine, obviously. What we need is a few bits to make it reciprocate. So we need some kind of crank, which is there, and that's made out of a bit of aluminium disc and a bolt. Another little bit there to make the connecting rod, and you can see it's just two holes in a strip of aluminium. Then we need something to act as a kind of flywheel, sort of drive belt kind of thing. And lots and lots of things will do. I just so happen to have this from a printer, which is kind of cute. So I'll be using that. But a ton of things will do, including a lump of cast concrete. Now, the final thing we need for this to make the whole thing work is a magnet. Now, magnets are absolutely everywhere. And I'm using this from a speaker, so this section here. If you hit this hard, what will happen is the lump will come off and you'll have two bits of metal with a central core and the actual magnet there. When you separate those out, what you have is the disc of metal and then the ring magnet itself. You need the disc and you need the ring. You actually need two of them. So that goes there and this is from another magnet and of course I could stack the magnets up and the other disc goes on the other side. So that bit there is part of the generation so you need that. Again those ring magnets you find them just everywhere. Speakers you can even find them in magnetrons. Please don't write telling me about beryllium in this. It's been a century since they put beryllium in here. So you can get those ring magnets out and use those ring magnets too. So that's the generation coil together. So the coil's there glued on that bit, they got a magnet in between, and then another lump of metal with the coil coming out. Now we need to put the actual flywheel together. And there's the flywheel I'm gonna use. Clearly you could use a big uh, cog if you wanted. I could put a drive belt around this if I wanted, but that's what I'm using. Then it's on a bit of eight mil rod as a bar. Then put a spacer on there. And then our bearing, and our bearing is a skater bearing and a Munson ring. And uh, then we put that on which is our crank that goes on there like that 
put a pin through it and that's the actual crank mechanism more or less done. So this bit goes on there and then the cut off piece of rod that we had goes on there. So I need to fasten all those together and mount them on a pretty board. Okay, and there it is all put together. Now, there's a few things to point out about this actually. When we rotate that, obviously this plunger goes in and out, but this plunger is just steel. There's no magnets on this. The coil and the magnets do not move. Only the plunger moves. Now it works because it's switching reluctance. We have this big ring magnet here and it's north facing that way and it's south facing that way. All the magnetism goes into these two steel plates, but there is no path between the north and the south until we put that rod in. When we put that rod in, the flux can pass up the rod and go from north to south. And of course the coil's right in there. So when it does that, the coil gets a magnetic field. Now when we draw that rod out, we take away that path so that magnetic field collapses. So even though the coil and the magnet are stationary, switching the flux using this in and out of the rod allows that magnetic field to grow and fall and grow and fall. So of course it generates. Now, we could do a rotary version of this. I've done this linear version because there is nothing exceptional about the engineering here. I use stock materials to make sure that things were the right size, so a 12 mil pipe with a 1 mil wall and a 10 mil bolt. You're going to find those absolutely everywhere, and you're going to find progressions of pipe sizes in there where one will slide in front of the other to really quite large diameters. So I'm using the an intrinsic benefit of the material that has already been engineered and going out and finding my scrap bits. I mean, it's just the way we live in our world. If you've got a 10 mil bolt, it's for 10 mil. So those scrap materials are used and put together. I didn't have to do any engineering because that had already been done for me. So the skill level here required to build something like that is fairly minimal. It took me, what, two hours to make this from scratch? So a couple of hours to make this from scratch and it's all saw and drill. And yes, this is very nice, but I grabbed this from something else. You could do a car tire. The idea obviously here is that this is driven by a fan belt. So if we put the fan belt on this onto our wind turbine or our water mill or something like that, we could get this belting around at quite a few thousand RPM. And that will feed that in and out very, very quickly and generate. But let's have a look what we can do just from me turning it by hand. Now, it's a uh, AC, obviously, and I've got the uh, meter on volts. And if I give that a spin by hand, we can get 0.6 of a volt out of that just by me spinning it by hand, which is pretty cool. Let's stick that onto amps and we'll give it another spin up. And we get 40 milliamps out of that. So bear in mind that has been turned by hand and I am measuring volts and amps separately, but it's generating quite a lot of energy from something so trivial. Upscaling this I think would be relatively easy. I think it's easy to build because there's no real engineering and it's built from scrap kicking around that we could find here actually. And obviously I find these um, magnets from a couple of speakers just this morning. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope it helps and thank you very much for watching.